Sometimes, after a person installs a joystick kit on their tractor to control a front-end loader, they run into the situation where one of the functions on the joystick seems stuck. And so, for example, they might have the loader raise and lower just fine, but then the joystick just won't move at all when they're trying to operate the bucket. So there can be a few things that can be causing that. And what I'm going to talk through in this video is a few of the situations that might be causing it and then a few things to try troubleshooting to fix the problem. The most common situation is where there's water in the cable and then that water freezes. Here I'm looking at both ends of a joystick control cable. This is the tip that is inside the joystick and then this is the tip that's attached with hardware to the spool on the valve. As you can see there's an inner cable that's moving back and forth and then the outer sheath and of course if there's water in there that gets frozen nothing happens then so you'd have the joystick trying to put pressure on this and it can't move because of the the water inside and then of course once that thaws it moves freely again a cable with water in it with it freezing is typically going to be seen after the joystick has been on the tractor for a few years so it's been installed, it's been working fine for several years, and then one morning when the tractors spent the night overnight and it was below freezing out, uh, the operator gets in the tractor and is trying to use the, the joystick to control the front end loader and then finds that one of the functions just seems like it's stuck. So the joystick, say, moves fine for raising and lowering the loader, but won't move at all for operating the bucket. And so, trying to take it into a warm place and letting it warm up um, to see once if that resolves the issue. Usually that means that the cable had been frozen um, inside and that cable does typically need to be replaced in that situation. Um, and then a less common situation is where the spool is actually binding. Now that's usually going to be clear right after installing the joystick kit. So say the joystick kit is brand new, it was just installed, and then one of the functions, the joystick just won't move. Um, so maybe you're, again, you're raised, you can raise and lower the loader just fine, but the bucket just won't move at all. Um, and then another situation that can lead to a binding spool, it is temperature related somewhat. Um, like we had a situation where a customer had purchased a joystick kit in the summer and he installed it in the summer and it was working just fine. And then one morning after he had his tractor outside overnight um, and it was the first um, night it had been below freezing, he came out to use his loader in the morning and he could raise and lower his loader just fine, but the bucket was stuck or the bucket function was stuck. And then he found though that after he turned on his tractor and let his tractor run for about 20 minutes, his bucket started working again. He didn't actually have to take his tractor into a warm place to let it thaw out. And so what we're pretty sure was going on there was the spool was somewhat tight. And by spool, I mean the internal section of the control valve that moves back and forth. And so what was probably happening is the spool was tight and then the oil was thicker because it was cold out. And then as the oil warmed up and got thinner that allowed that spool to start moving again. So in either of the situations with a spool that's sticking, whether it seems temperature related or just seems to be that way, as soon as you get it, there's a few different things to try that will hopefully resolve the problem. And in the next section of the video, I'm going to talk through those things that you can try. Here we're looking at the two function control valve that we carry. I believe that the principles that we're describing in this video would be the same regardless of the brand of control valve that you're working with as long as it's a sectional valve. And by sectional valve, what I mean is you've got the tie rods holding it together. So that's, oh, I guess you can see it better this way. You've got the two tie rods that go through the entire control valve and then you've got the bolts holding them tight. And what that's doing is you have one, two, three, four sections here, and that's all being held together. This type of valve is not a sectional valve. You can see you have the same types of ports 
like these are the working ports, but there's no sections in there. And then of course, there's also no tie rods holding the control valve together. And so the situation that we're talking about in this video, if your valve is designed like this, this the situation would be different. What can happen in shipping is these sections can get just a tiny bit misaligned. They could twist this way, they could twist this way, just a tiny bit. And that can be enough, not even to cause any leaking or anything, but it can be enough to cause a spool. And this is, the, this is a spool and this is a spool. These two things are what's sliding in and out and allowing the oil to flow to control a function, for example, loader this one would be used to control the loader up and down this would be used to control the bucket and if either of these get stuck where they physically can't move then what feels like to the operator what it feels like is just the joystick is stuck and not moving let's assume that this spool is binding you've determined that it is not water in the cable and you're pretty sure that the spool itself is binding there's two different things to try i would recommend doing them one at a time, um, just so you're not getting the cause mixed up with another cause. Um, so the first thing you can do is you can loosen all four of the bolts and then re with the valve installed on the plate, on the bracket, you, you're leaving it installed on the bracket so that these are nice and firm down on the bracket. And then you're loosening up these four bolts and then you are retightening them so you're going around and retightening them evenly so that by the time they're tightened down everything has has realigned straight in accordance with the, the steel bracket that it's mounted on if that doesn't resolve the problem what you can try is what can happen sometimes is in the manufacturing process these bolts don't get tightened evenly so you can also try loosening those both and then of course going back and forth and tightening them up little by little so that they're evenly tightened because that can cause um, internally the spool to bind as well.